Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to use the data analysis tool in Excel to run a t-test on some very silly hypothetical data. And so my research question is, um, it's do students studying in a library with their cell phones spend any more time studying than students without their cell phones? Um, so I'm going to use no cell phones as a control because nobody used to have a cell phone and use cell phones as my experimental group. But this is as if you were watching library video footage and kind of watching individuals and timing how long they spend in the library. So this is all made up data. You actually, if you were to look at this and look at the averages, to do really anything with this data, you're going to need to sort it out because this column that groups are different levels of the IV is all mixed up. So I would go to sort and filter and I always like to go to custom sort. I'm going to sort by my grouping and now I can look at everything about my cell, the people with a cell phone. And so if I highlight those cells, I have 22 samples with an average of 1.295. My no cell group I have 27 samples, so slightly more, with an average of 1.34. I could also use Excel to give me ranges and standard deviation. There's a lot of things I could do with Excel to just kind of get an idea of what my data is showing, and that's always a good idea before you run any kind of inferential statistics because you want to make sure that you haven't highlighted something weird and input data you didn't mean to input. And so when you get this output that seems really crazy than what and different than what you expected, you'll know that something's wrong. Okay, so we've sorted the data. You can do all kinds of observations with the different formulas Excel offers. But today we're just going to focus on that data analysis. And so when I go to data analysis, I am going to want to use a t-test. I have two independent samples because each one of these cell phone users was a different person and I'm going to assume unequal variances. Our sample sizes were not equal and um, that also this is the same type of t-test that students using R to run their statistics it's going to give you a similar result. So it's going to ask me for my input ranges. And so I'm going to highlight all of my numbers for people using a cell phone as one range and highlight everyone using no cell as the other range. And my alpha is set to 0.05, which is good. That's what we want to set at. So that was the default. It's going to put everything in a new worksheet. That's fine. And so I hit OK. And so this is not the format you would put into a paper, but this is what Excel gives you. So let me zoom in on that a little bit. So variable one and variable two, you have to be you know, aware of what you highlighted. So for me, this was the cell group and this was the no cell group. And you can see the means there, definitely unequal amounts of variance. This had about twice as much variance as the cell group. Um, it counted our sample sizes. So this would be in, in your tables. You'll have to calculate standard deviation because it did not give you standard deviation. So I'll show you the formula to do that. It gives you your degrees of freedom, which is something I'm going to ask you to put in a table. Your test statistic ended up being negative. Well, that's because it was probably looking at the small group before the large group instead of the other way around. If you look at what that formula really is, it's an absolute value. So your test statistic is really 0 0.1557 or 8 or 78 if you weren't going to round it all. 
We're not interested in a one tail P or critical value because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if people using cell phones would study more or study less. I was just interested in if they were different. And so that is our two tail outcome where we're looking at both being above or below. And so here I can see that my p-value is 0.88. So if you were to look at two samples, two groups, and draw a random sample from each of them, data would end up this similar in 88 out of 100 times that you drew those samples. So it's very, very likely that these groups uh, there's there's no significant difference between the groups and so these are the pieces of data that you put into your APA style table how to make that table is another video but so that you can see how to calculate your standard deviation let's go back to cell use and just put it over here so the formula is STD, and we want to get a standard deviation of a sample. Highlight all of those cells. And that should calculate the standard deviation for you. And you should always label that the standard deviation of the cell group equals 0.82 or 83, whereas the variance was completely different. So you do want to put standard deviation into your APA style table. Also, in case you watch the R video or you're interested in possibly using R or you've already watched the R video, here was the outcome from the R t-test. And so you can see these two means are reported here. And a similar degree of freedom, but without rounding the same p-value, only rounded, and the same test statistic, only it came out positive because when I did mine, I made sure to input the larger number before the smaller number. So that's just a little brief video on how to use Excel to generate t-test values so that you can create your first APA style table with your pH lab data. Good luck, guys.